na 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 it's not get flagged, right? Um, but you know who I'm talking about. The world of superheroes is near and dear to all nerds everywhere. Whether you read the comics, you watch the movies, or just love the animated series when you grew up. You might like classic mainstream heroes like Batman or Spider-Man or somebody more niche like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Uh, but I guarantee that you have some strong feelings about them, even if it's just that you dislike certain ones or you think they've never done a good Fantastic Four movie. You've got an opinion, guaranteed. And you know it's even more fun than just talking about superheroes? How about being superheroes with homework and a curfew? Wait, no, no, really, come back. Welcome to D&D Versus, where I compare D&D with another RPG system, uh, hopefully introducing you to some new systems and helping you branch out from the mega juggernaut that is D&D. I love the system, but sometimes you got to try something new, like superheroes. This is Masks, A New Generation. Uh, it is from Magpie Games, written, designed, and developed by Brendan Conway. Um, as always, background and setting information that I provide is going to be pulled from the book, and you're welcome to tweak it as you, as you see fit when you're playing it. And in fact, the book is actually adamant that you do this. Make it for you guys. We retcon comic books and movies in canon and in comic books, we do that normally, so why not do it in an RPG system that you're already playing it? It's okay to change and tweak stuff. You and your friends, your party, are up and coming new superheroes uh, in the uh, 16 to 19 year old range. Of course, if you're an, in, you know, long lived alien from far off, you might be a thousand years old, but as long as you're acting in that 16 to 19 year old range, you're perfect. And you're trying to figure out your powers and your place in the world. And so there's going to be drama. There's going to be upset feelings. There's going to be adults who just don't get it. And of course, you're going to kick supervillain butt. In terms of setting, Mass takes place in Halcyon City, the city of the future. Uh, it's your typical stand in for a major metropolis. Metropolis. Uh, it's the birthplace of heroes, uh, dating back all the way to the 1930s with the first public superhero, Maggie McIntyre, better known as Flying Freedom. Uh, just like in the comics, the world has gone through a few generations of heroes. Uh, you had the classics like the Golden Generation with their corny names like Champion, Haunt, Golden Girl, fighting off evil monsters like Gorgomorth or Captain Coldheart and his flying uh, death ship. Classic heroes and villains struggling through all the prejudices of the World War II era, talking about, you know, gender and race here too, even. The Silver Generation shows up in the 1950s when heroes have become even more powerful and are dealing with more powerful enemies. The idea is not just superhuman powers, Captain America and stuff like that, but things that go so far beyond that. This is when villains get really nasty, too. So you have heroes like the Silver Savior contending with Dr. Infinity, the all-powerful time-altering android, because... That's never good. And we have our first superhero team-ups, like uh, the Exemplars and the Amazing Eight. And you have the rise of equal rights. Heroes are helping pave the way, and some are openly getting political. The Bronze Generation of heroes born in the 70s and 80s uh, were a bit more introspective and moved from dealing with world-destroying enemies to ones that were far more personal and connected to the hero. Uh, as an example from the book, the hero Quintessence, uh, Niall Collins, um, was had a friend who was targeted by his arch enemy, Silence. P-S-I, yeah. Um, the medical examiners couldn't determine what killed his friend. It, maybe he was dead when he was thrown off the building, or he hit something on the way down, or maybe his neck snapped when Quintessence swooped down to catch him. Either way, Quintessence's friend died for being Quintessence's friend. Um, that's and, and, and that's on Quintessence. Uh, Spider-Man Friends, uh, you guys might know the Gwen Stacy story. This is the, the same kind of ending. Um, 
So the Bronze Generation introduced us to a new wave of heroes that started to chase, change the face of superheroes. We took on darker social issues, things that had been kept under the rug and we didn't talk about. Uh, and some of them took a different tactic to fighting crime, you know, fire with fire. And these are the heroes who are still active, along with some of the Silver Generation, leading the fight, making the calls, being the heroes of Halcyon City. And there's you guys. You are the new generation, the modern generation, the, the young generation. We don't even know what to call us yet. Now, Halcyon City knows how to handle a bunch of supers. They know how to deal with dinosaurs blocking traffic, um, going into the city during work hours, alien invasions, mad scientists, experiments running amok, all that. And Halcyon City has the infrastructure to fix it all up before the dust even settles. Everyone's used to superheroes, but they don't know what to do with you. So what's even going on in a game of Mask the New Generation? Well, you're fighting bad guys, dealing with your teammates who you may agree with or have a crush on, um, your parents, teachers, maybe a mentor superhero, uh, the mayor, the news, all that stuff, all depending on your superhero. You kind of set it out for yourself. Expect some melodrama. It's going to be intense because remember when you're 16 and 19, everything just matters a little bit more. Um, everything is, is dire, even if it's somebody not liking you. Um, and the game continues beyond the superhero brawl that we get in the comic books. It continues on to, well, we just, you know, stopped a jewelry store from being robbed. Bad guy is captured. He's going to prison. Uh, you know, let's take a breather. Um, now, are you going to apologize to your buddy? That thing you said really got under his skin and just because you got hit and so you said something, you regret it. Or, you know, uh, maybe you're going to take a moment to celebrate and high five your teammate who just kind of leaves you hanging uh, with a with a you know, just dismissive gesture. That is the theme of Masks. This is being superheroes, dealing with the drama. It's going to be, it, it's a very role play heavy experience. And fortunately, the game mechanics actually support this. It's really, really cool. In terms of mechanics, let's get the big one out of the way. There's no health, there's no HP. You don't have numbers that you track in before you get knocked unconscious. Take a breather. I know, it's different. Uh, instead, the game actually has uh, conditions. These are afraid, angry, guilty, hopeless, and insecure. Anytime something affects you, it may make you one of those things. It may make you angry, it may make you afraid, and that affects die rolls that you'll do other stuff with, which we'll get to. The thing I'm gonna, and the, the reason I bring this up is this game has roleplay built into the mechanics of combat. This actually makes it a great, great way to introduce um, uh, new new role players. Uh, maybe you're one yourself, or you've got some that are joining in, uh, or even if you're a veteran player. Trust me, this helped me a bunch actually. Um, it really encourages you to roleplay, make decisions, decide things, allow yourself to have emotions instead of being the cool, unflappable hero that, you know, just doesn't blink staring down an ancient red dragon, been there, done that. No, this will actually encourage you to do something as a character. Very, very interesting stuff. All die rolls in the game run on a 2d6 system. So you're literally taking 2d6, rolling it, and then adding your label, which are a variety of stats. You have your freak, you have your danger, you have your superior, your savior, and your mundane. And these all relate to how you and the world around you view yourself, and they will shift and change. The action for a scene, whether this is a combat scene, fighting a supervillain, fighting amongst yourselves, sparring with words, however it is, um, you use a move. Uh, there are some basic moves, and then there are some hero-specific moves. We'll get to the hero-specific stuff here in a second. Basic moves are your bread and butter stuff. You can directly engage a threat 
Uh, this does not need to necessarily be physical. You're going to be trading blows, though. De depending on how well you roll, you can you have different options of doing things. Or if you fail to do something, you'll take a powerful blow. Take a powerful blow. That's when the enemy hits you. Now, I know you're doing the same thing I did, but doesn't the DM roll that? No, actually, the DM never rolls a dice in this game. Everything is about your heroes and how they're handling stuff. So in the case of directly engaging a threat, you fly in, you do stuff, and you decide, hey, I rolled well enough that I'm going to take something from him. This could be a sense of security, and or you're just going to take the scepter from him, and so you can't use it. Nah, 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 nah. But you guys have been exchanged blows. So you got him, and you got the thing, He's going to hit you back. So you roll, take a powerful blow. And depending on how well you roll, well, you might withstand the blow and congratulations. If not, uh, well, that sucks. Um, and now you have conditions to deal with or and everything is a choice. This is the greatest thing about the system is even when you you get hit, you get to decide how you're going to take that hit. Do you mark some conditions, become afraid and angry at this guy and not know what to do? Or do you lash out verbally to one of your teammates and say something to get them in here? You know, something like that. You can also roll to unleash your powers and change the, the world around you in some way or deal with an obstacle. You can jump in to defend somebody. Uh, and again, this could be a emotional thing. Somebody says something mean to one of your teammates and you go, whoa, 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 hey, back off. That is totally a move. That is something you can roll dice for and actually do um, and will actually help you determine, well, I said this thing, does it actually help? And so you actually have a gameplay mechanic for role playing. It's so cool. Um, you can assess the situation. Perception. Check it out. Read the, read the room you got. Uh, you can provoke somebody into doing something, whether that's a teammate or making the villain make a poor decision. Uh, you can also comfort and support somebody, and that's kind of your heel, uh, whether in, in a fight or outside of it. And you can pierce the mask, which sounds super metal. And, I mean, you're, you're basically you're trying to get into their head. You're trying to figure out what they're thinking. So beyond the basic moves that every character has access to, everybody will pick a playbook. This is the this is the structure for your superhero. It doesn't say what abilities you have, but it does give you a section to decide what abilities kind of tie with this. So um, to kind of lay these out, these, these are your classes, basically, and the system works best when you only have one of each of these. Um, no duplicates. Um, so you have the beacon. This is the kid who's, he's the heart of the team and has absolutely no powers. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's pluck and just gumption and Probably going to get thrown around a lot, but he's he's the heart of the team, um, and he's going to cheer people on. And you know he's got got his way with gadgets and some some acrobatics. Good for him. Um, you also have the bull. This is well, I mean it's the bull, bull, bull in the china shop, direct, forward, invulnerable, can get into a fight, um, and is going to be very. Um, uh, passionate. Uh, one of their mechanics is actually picking out a lover and a rival. Don't stress, guys. You don't have to necessarily lover it up. This is just somebody that you care about and then somebody you really like to irritate. But remember, they're on your team. Uh, you have the delinquent. Welcome to playing Loki. Uh, this is your trickster. This is the one tagging the school. This is, I mean, your very classic delinquent and you gave them superpowers. Um, yeah, uh, you have the doomed. Uh, this is very classic. Yeah, I, uh, I had these powers, but uh, my demon father is coming for me. Uh, yeah, it's Raven from, from the Teen Titans is, is a really good example. Uh, this is somebody who's slipping, uh, potentially going to lose, uh, lose their life. Uh, they, they've seen their destiny, any number of things like that. Something bad is coming for them. Um, this is not the hero who has world-shaping powers and might blow everything up. That's coming later. 
Uh, next, you have the Janus. It's Spider-Man, guys. This is the the hero that has two lives. Janus, two-faced god from Rome. Doesn't matter. Um, and you are literally trying to juggle both the superhero world and your secret identity. While everybody else might have a secret identity, yours is really important and something you are seriously keeping secret. And that is a primary thing for you. And so you have uh, you have certain obligations that you get to decide from a list of. And then you have the whole idea of who do you reveal your secret identity to? Who do you keep it secret from the entire party or not? Yeah. Um, you have the legacy. This is kind of the uh, well, the legacy of superheroes. This could be parents all the way back. This could be the adopted. They adopted you in and trained you, and now you're the new whoever. Um, so it is very much a you have this lineage behind you, and that's a whole lot of pressure. People recognize you probably because of whoever came before you. So. Uh, enjoy that. Um, you have the Nova. Uh, this is your person with world-shaking, reality-warping powers who might, if he kind of leans into his powers a little bit too much, might, you know, just blow everything up. Um, you have one ability called Reality Storm, and you literally shape reality and change things. And unless you do extra stuff, there's collateral damage guaranteed. Uh, so this is very much a glass cannon kind of character. Um, and then you have the outsider. This is your Starfire. Um, a lot of Teen Titan references. Uh, this is the outsider coming in uh, from another plane, uh, another planet. Um, maybe, you know, and wherever you came from, you're different. You stand out, you look different. People can immediately recognize that about you. And you're still trying to figure out this whole earth culture thing. Um, lots of cool techie, sciencey, alien stuff, but with some drawbacks of you just don't get people. Um, you have the protege. This is literally, hey, I've got a mentor. He's really, really cool, and I'm learning from them, and we have this similarity, but then he does this thing, and I do this thing, and we don't always agree. And so you have some support and then some, some friction there. Really interesting concept. It's a very Batman and Nightwing kind of thing. They both came from the same place. They trained together. Batman likes being spooky and scary, and Nightwing is like, why don't we just, you know, talk it out, and uh, I'm going to make fun of you. Um, and then you have the Transformed. This is Beast. This is the Hulk. Uh, this is Beast Boy. Uh, you have any number of those uh, where you are a disfigured creature in some way, some something that makes you a little freakish um, and are uh, not quite uh, wholesome. Uh, that's the base playbooks. There's, uh, I think, two more supplements that have some more, uh, more complex uh, heroes, including one that's like, oh, you came from the past. Cool. Oh, you turned into a villain in the future. And you get to watch as you progress and play. You get to watch yourself become a villain. Uh, kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> unless you change time. With each of these playbooks comes a unique set of questions to help you determine your background uh, and you'll work with your DM to, to kind of craft this up. And then it actually has a very, very cool system where every single playbook has a specific question about when you guys all teamed up. Uh, so as a Nova character I'm playing, um, <laughs> we saved the day and then we managed to wreck something very important. What was it? <laughs> we kind of blew up a dog park. Sorry, guys. No dogs were harmed. Dog dog park harmed. No. Statue harmed. Dog park harmed. It was a mess. Sorry, guys. Every single character, the, the playbooks, have preset labels. These are the aforementioned danger, freak, savior, superior, and mundane. And you have them set in, in predetermined locations based on what playbook you start with. Though you do get one free shift. Um, and that is one of the running mechanics of the game is shifting your labels. So they can range from negative two to plus three. And so you will add those modifiers or subtract the modifiers, adding a negative number, you get it. And so for instance, I wanna go directly engage a threat. I'm gonna fight him. You add danger. So if you are a very dangerous person, uh, like say the bull, uh, who's all about getting into a fight, you'll roll your 2d6 and then you'll add your danger on top of that. 
and based on what you roll, you get stuff. Um, but there's a negative to going too far one way or the other. Obviously, too low, and you're just going to be bad at doing stuff. Go too high, and actually, if somebody looks at you and manages to shift your label, whether by saying something about you, a cutting word like, oh my god, I can't believe that you guys are hanging around this guy. He's a menace. Uh, he destroys everything he comes across. Well, that might force your, your danger up. And if you go from plus three to plus, there there is no plus four. What, what, do, what do you do? Something bad happens. You get inflicted with a condition. In this case, it probably you'd probably be angry about that. Or maybe you'd feel guilty about being a danger. Whatever. It has a negative effect on you. Same thing if you happen to go too low. Mundane, the classic, like, hey, you're an ordinary guy stat. If you're playing the transformed or maybe the, the Nova with these freakish powers and everyone keeps looking at you and kind of, ooh, it's not, you know, your mundane might slip down and all of a sudden now you're afraid, you know, of being around people. What if, what if they think you're a villain? Um, or maybe you're just insecure. Uh, and all these conditions, while they apply negatives to your your d different die rolls, um, you have ways to clear them. Um, these the comfort and support abilities. So if a friend comes alongside you and they make some comments and and they and you open up to them, which requires you to kind of spill the beans or maybe you guys make out um, or just talk and hang out then cool, you can clear condition or some other different bonuses too. But if you decide that, no, my character just doesn't feel like opening up to this particular person or at all, um, you can just kind of rebuff them. They tried to help you out and you blew them off. And that is one of the cool mechanics of this um, because the system doesn't require you to stop being angry and just erase that because they, they comforted and supported you and made a high roll. You're still the one who decides to open up to them. And if you decide, I'm not opening up to them, you kind of shrug them off, give them a cold shoulder, you can go on being angry, which of course means that you keep that condition marked. What happens if all your conditions are marked? You're knocked out. Uh, so that's the way it's your health. You're either literally knocked unconscious or you flee the scene. Um, this is also how it applies to just a conversation. If people are yelling and being angry at each other and saying spiteful things, you might end up getting all your conditions marked and you run off from the party and you just bail. Um, that's actually another way you can clear conditions. You can go do dumb stuff because you're a teenager. So literally one of the ways to deal with being insecure and not so sure about yourself, well, run off and do something reckless without consulting your team. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. But hey, you do that. Oh yeah, screw these guys. Whoosh, off you go. Go ahead and remove. You're not insecure. You know exactly what to do. Sure, splitting the party won't be a bad thing at all. One of the big mechanics for the role play aspects is influence. This is, I mean, it's what it sounds like. You have influence over somebody. So they listen to you or you have an opinion that they care about that kind of thing. Um, by default, all adults have influence over you. So they can uh, they can use that to gain a benefit. Well, anybody who has influence gains a benefit to die rolls against you to, to comfort and support you because you care or to smack you around to to directly engage you. Uh, so if your mentor turns evil and he has influence over you, he may use that against you. Um, and then you can also take advantage of influence if you have it to really stick it to them. You give up your, your influence, but then you can wreck their next die roll. You can force them into different actions and stuff like that. Um, and so this is one of the mechanics uh, that kind of gets passed around uh, the team, especially near the end of the session. Uh, we'll get to that. And allows you to kind of decide and see on your character sheet who cares about what I say and knowing that out there, some of them have influence and so they can more anything really take, give it to you uh, or um, comfort in and, and back you up. Uh, so giving influence is a, is a dangerous two, two, two edged thing in order to gain experience and advance and level up like any good RPG does. You have to fail or more specifically, you have to, you have to miss 
with many of your abilities missing is failing. The one exception is when you roll to take a powerful blow. If you roll high on take a powerful blow, that means you get clocked and something bad happens. But if you miss taking a powerful blow, the bad guy missed. Don't worry about it. It makes sense when you're playing. And you actually get to mark advancement. Um, this is similar to the World of Darkness style. If you get five uh, potential uh, for every miss or some other abilities give you the ability to add potential, get five of them, that's an advancement. And you can get to go select that off your little advancement check sheet on your specific character sheet. Uh, these advancements let you do really cool things like take a power from somebody else's playbook or expand what powers you have or do something really weird like get the lover and rival mechanic from the bull. Uh, very different evolutions. Um, you can also lock your labels so they never change or you can unlock your moment of truth, uh, which basically lets you at one point or another you have that superhero moment, the big two two page, one panel, epic moment where you just become the hero. You just do the impossible. You do whatever is necessary and it just happens. There's no rolling. You just, boom, this is happening now and just decide and narrate that out because this is your moment to be a superhero and everything goes right for this moment. Um, and then the moment is passed. And you're back to, oh, right, I'm just a kid. Uh, but progress enough, and you will eventually uh, clear out the, the prerequisites, the, the starter advancements, and then you get to more adult stuff, which is literally, um, and they have adult moves. Sounds kind of inappropriate, but things like instead of unleashing your powers, you apply your powers with care and consideration. Um, that's not actually what it's called. Um, but it allows you to have uh, things don't go quite haywire. <laughs> or uh, instead of trying to provoke somebody, you can actually reason with them for the best of their benefit. It's not how you say that, but you know what I mean. Um, or if you feel like your character has progressed enough, maybe you've checked off all the other advancements and this is the last one, or maybe you're kind of done playing your character and you feel like that, well, you check the little box that says retire your character or they become a paragon of the city. And you watch as your hero, he's all grown up and he's off in, oh, I'm back to being a kid again, back at square one, uh, which for me, I love because this literally means you guys could just play a never ending game of masks and just cycling as people retire. Well, then the new guy comes in and that's that's how superhero teams work. Besides these advancements, you also have team moves, which let you celebrate a victory with somebody or kind of open up to them. And that allows you to get some other benefits. And then you also have um, uh, a end of session kind of recap thing where you actually decide, well, did I join and do, do I feel like part of the team and who welcomed me into the team? Um, in which case you give influence to them or you actually might say, hmm, uh, I don't feel like I was part of the team. You take influence away from him. Or you just say, actually, I'm growing into my own person. I have a better idea of who I am and you can shift your labels. So that's Masks, the new generation. Um, it's superheroes with homework. Um, it is very different to D&D. &D. Uh, there's no races, uh, just classes, and uh, not a lot of spells, not a lot of HP and, and normal uh, kill all the goblins kind of stuff. The combat is there. It is full-fledged, and uh, the GM has some rules that they can do uh, that kind of, uh, like I said, they never actually roll anything, but when you fail stuff, their different monsters can do things to you. And that's stuff not worth going into. DM, you can go check that out um, into more of it, but it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty slick uh, and allows the players to be the ones who run things, and you're just more reactionary, which is kind of cool to do. Uh, personally, I am loving it, playing every Monday night right now. I have a terrific group of folks who are going to get into some trouble. We just, blur we, we just broke an interdimensional teleporter with one of our 
uh, mentors on the other side of the portal. Um, so hopefully we can fix it. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't my fault. So do you like superhero RPGs? Does masks sound fun? Does playing a kid sound fun? It's actually more fun than I thought it would be. Um, let me know in the comments, uh, as always. Uh, and I will see you guys next time.